Welcome to this discussion on baclofen toxicity. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is baclofen? Baclofen is a medication primarily used to treat muscle spasticity, a condition causing muscle stiffness and tightness. It works by affecting neurotransmitters in the nervous system that control muscle activity. While highly effective at therapeutic doses, exceeding those doses can lead to serious complications. So it's a double-edged sword, effective treatment, but with a significant risk if misused. What are some of the key symptoms of baclofen toxicity that people should be aware of? Symptoms can range from mild drowsiness and dizziness to much more severe issues like coma, respiratory depression, and seizures. Muscle weakness, confusion, and autonomic dysfunction affecting involuntary bodily functions like heart rate and breathing are also possible. The speed at which these symptoms escalate is a major concern. That sounds incredibly serious. How does this toxicity actually occur? Is it simply a matter of taking too much? While exceeding the recommended dosage is a primary cause, it's not the only factor. At therapeutic doses, baclofen primarily acts on the spinal cord. However, overdose extends its effects to the brain, causing central nervous system depression. Paradoxically, this can even trigger seizures. The maximum recommended daily dose is crucial to remember. 80 milligrams for adults and 60 for children over 8. So it's not just about the total amount, but also where the drug acts within the nervous system. How is baclofen toxicity diagnosed and treated? Diagnosis involves a thorough patient history, symptom evaluation, and ruling out other potential causes. While blood tests can confirm baclofen levels, they aren't routinely available. <laughs> Treatment is primarily supportive care, monitoring vital signs, respiratory support if needed, intravenous fluids, Benzodiazepines may be used for seizures, activated charcoal to limit absorption, and in severe cases, hemodialysis. Supportive care is key, and it sounds like a multi-pronged approach is often necessary. What are some potential long-term complications that can arise from baccalovin toxicity? The prognosis depends on the severity of the overdose. With prompt treatment, full recovery is common. However, severe cases can lead to anoxic brain injury from oxygen deprivation, aspiration pneumonia, pressure ulcers from immobility, rhabdomyolysis, a breakdown of muscle tissue, and hypothermia. Those are some very serious potential consequences. How can baclofen toxicity be prevented in the first place? Prevention is key. Taking baclofen exactly as prescribed is paramount. It's important to understand that toxicity can occur even with doses as low as 100 milligrams. Patients with kidney impairment are at higher risk and require close monitoring. Safe storage, proper use, and avoiding alcohol or other central nervous system depressants are also crucial. Patient education is vital. So it's a combination of careful prescribing, patient education, and awareness of risk factors. What's the overall takeaway regarding baclofen toxicity? Baclofen toxicity is a serious, potentially fatal condition demanding immediate medical attention. Healthcare professionals must be vigilant in recognizing symptoms and providing timely, appropriate care. Adhering to prescribing guidelines and educating patients about safe medication practices are essential for minimizing the risk of overdose. That was a great discussion. Thank you for sharing your expertise and providing such clear and informative answers. Baclofen Withdrawal Syndrome Baclofen is a centrally acting skeletal muscle relaxant that functions as an agonist at gamma-aminobutyric acid, GABA, receptors. It is widely prescribed for the treatment of spasticity associated with conditions such as multiple sclerosis, spinal cord injury, and cerebral palsy. While its efficacy in managing spasticity is well established, abrupt discontinuation or rapid dose reduction can lead to baclofen withdrawal syndrome. This is a potentially life-threatening condition that requires timely recognition and intervention. Baclofen exerts its pharmacologic effect by enhancing inhibitory GABAergic neurotransmission in the central nervous system. This action reduces neuronal excitability and helps suppress spastic muscle activity. With chronic use, the nervous system undergoes neuroadaptive changes. When baclofen is suddenly discontinued, these adaptive mechanisms are unmasked resulting in a hyperexcitable neurological state. This disruption can precipitate a broad range of neuropsychiatric, neuromuscular, autonomic, and gastrointestinal symptoms. Symptoms of baclofen withdrawal typically appear within 24 to 48 hours after abrupt cessation. However, in some cases, onset may occur within a few hours or may be delayed for several days. 
The timing is influenced by the dosage, duration of use, and route of administration, whether oral or intrathecal. Neuropsychiatric symptoms may involve agitation, confusion, delirium, hallucinations that may be visual, auditory, or tactile in nature, delusions, psychosis, insomnia, anxiety, mood disturbances, and behavioral changes. Neuromuscular symptoms include rebound spasticity, increased muscle rigidity, tremors, involuntary movements such as dyskinesia, generalized weakness, and in more severe cases, seizures. Autonomic instability is frequently observed and may present as fever, hyperthermia, tachycardia, fluctuations in blood pressure, profuse sweating, and in rare cases, multi-organ dysfunction or failure. Gastrointestinal symptoms include nausea and vomiting, with diarrhea occurring less frequently. Respiratory compromise is rare but can occur in severe cases, particularly following abrupt interruption of intrathecal baclofen. One illustrative case involved a patient on long-term oral baclofen therapy who experienced acute onset of hallucinations, delirium, elevated body temperature, and hemodynamic instability following abrupt discontinuation. Reinstitution of baclofen at the prior therapeutic dose led to rapid resolution of symptoms. This case emphasizes the importance of early diagnosis and the immediate need to restart therapy when baclofen withdrawal is suspected. The clinical presentation of baclofen withdrawal can resemble other syndromes, such as withdrawal from benzodiazepines or alcohol. It may also mimic delirium caused by metabolic imbalances, infections, or structural abnormalities of the central nervous system. A key distinguishing feature is a documented history of baclofen use, especially with recent interruption, coupled with the rapid onset of symptoms. The primary approach to managing baclofen withdrawal is prevention. Abrupt cessation should be avoided. Baclofen must always be tapered gradually under clinical supervision. If withdrawal symptoms occur, immediate reinstitution of baclofen at the prior effective dose is recommended. Most symptoms improve significantly following reinstitution. Supportive care includes the use of benzodiazepines to manage agitation, delirium, or seizures when necessary. Continuous monitoring and intervention for autonomic disturbances are important particularly in patients with severe symptoms or those receiving intrathecal baclofen. When tapering is necessary, the dose should be reduced over a period of days to weeks. The schedule should be individualized based on patient-specific factors such as comorbidities, route of administration, and baseline functional status. In cases involving malfunction of an intrathecal baclofen pump, immediate restoration of baclofen delivery is critical. In these situations, Consultation with a neurologist or pain management specialist is strongly advised. Withdrawal symptoms can develop even in patients who are taking baclofen as prescribed and not misusing the medication. Patients receiving intrathecal baclofen are at higher risk for more rapid and severe withdrawal symptoms compared to those on oral therapy. Psychiatric symptoms such as anxiety and psychosis may persist for several weeks or even months after resolution of the initial physical symptoms. Management of baclofen withdrawal should never be attempted outside a medically supervised setting due to the risk of serious complications, including seizures and autonomic instability. In conclusion, baclofen withdrawal syndrome represents a medical emergency that requires prompt clinical attention. Delayed recognition may lead to significant morbidity and in some cases, mortality. Healthcare providers should maintain a high level of suspicion in any patient presenting with acute neuropsychiatric or autonomic symptoms, particularly when there is a known history of baclofen use and recent dose interruption. Effective prevention through gradual tapering, rapid recognition of withdrawal symptoms, and timely reinstitution of therapy are essential to achieving favorable patient outcomes. Summary for clinical practice. Always taper baclofen slowly, never discontinue abruptly. Recognize early signs of withdrawal, especially in patients at elevated risk. Reinstitute baclofen immediately if withdrawal symptoms develop. Provide supportive care as needed and monitor for complications. Educate patients and caregivers regarding adherence and the dangers of stopping baclofen without medical oversight.